it is never a dull week in Pirate Land as there has been plenty of news surrounding this program. The Seton Hall men's basketball team made another splash in the transfer portal, snagging two bigs in Eliza Hutchins ever from Austin P and Jaden Bettyako from Santa Clara. Meanwhile, Seton Hall women's basketball got a pair of pickups as well with St. Bonaventure transfer Ayana Lops and UMass transfer McKenna White committing to Seton Hall. For the Seton Hall softball team, it all comes down to this. A sweep against Butler would put them in a position to share the regular season Big East Conference title, as well as give them a bye in the first round of the Big East tournament. As for the baseball side of things, the Pirates are able to pick up a non-conference win against Manhattan, and they have a huge series of their own on the road against UConn as they continue their path to a top four spot in the Big East Conference to reach the Big East tournament. Do the basketball teams just find a diamond in a rough? Will the softball squad continue their great success? And will the baseball team make waves in this conference? I'm John McCooch, and for the final time, this is Hall Talk. Hello and welcome back to Hall Talk. I'm John McCooch, joined alongside the one and the only Chris Kiley. And Chris, we've got a lot of news to talk about. We've got a lot of news. There's basketball, women's basketball, softball, baseball, as you just heard me talk about as well. But it's going to be a really exciting time here in Pirate Land, as we mentioned. And Chris, we're going to start off with the men's basketball team. As, as we mentioned, they picked up Elijah Hutchins Everett and Jaden Bediaco. And both of these guys, above 6'10", Bediaco 6'10", Hutchins Everett 6'11", you know, heading into this offseason with the transfers and everything, the issue was that Seton Hall was not going to have a great front court uh, heading into the season with the loss of Tyree Samuel and everything else that was going on. How do these two transfers kind of help fix that issue? Well, that was one of the biggest problems for Seton Hall this past season. They didn't really have a lot of depth with the departure of uh, Tyree Samuel this just now, just a couple of months ago. And with the fact that Alexis Yetna wasn't able to play all season, Pirates really just lacked that ability of packing in the paint and making opponents not have it be comfortable when they were ever driving in trying to get layups. So with their two acquisitions, two bigs notably, obvious impact is going to be the fact that they're going to be able to pack it in the paint more. You're going to have a less chance of getting layups. As for the offense, you're going to be able to have a higher chance of getting offensive rebounds. You always love that. And then when you look at the two guys that they have just acquired in Everett, a former Ohio Valley Conference player uh, that was second team when he was a freshman, and then you look at when he was recently playing against big guys, against a big team like Purdue, against Zach Eady, 19-7 is nothing to complain about. Not at all. It's definitely nothing to complain about when you go against really the best player in the country at the time. And now that these Seton Hall Pirates have made these moves, they've done what they've had to do, how is this team going to look heading into the next season in terms of ranking in the Big East Conference? Because we were kind of, before this happened, we're sitting here saying, seeing all these roster spots open, there's going to be a lot of transfers coming in. And now that those transfers are starting to come in, there's still a number of spots left on this roster. Where does Seton Hall kind of rank in the Big East Conference heading into next year? Well, it is a tough way of looking at it. When you look at the Big East overall, they've had some big shuffle ups as of late. Most famous right now is currently St. John's and Georgetown with their two acquisitions of head coach Rick Pitino, who is definitely, I think, going to be the biggest change in the conference with that type of game changer in New York. But conference overall, I think Pirates is still going to be competitive with what Sha will, uh, Coach Shaheen Holloway was able to do in his first season and really institute change that quickly. I think it's something that he can really continue season two. Look at the amount of games that he won as a first-year head coach in, com in Paris Seton Hall history. That's something that's definitely impressive. I mean, Downey Shaheen Holloway is just never a good bet to ever do because, again, with last year having to kind of put this roster together, and now this year is really going to be a huge test to how good is Shaheen Holloway as a coach. How can he build a program? How can he rebuild a program? Because there's going to be a lot of time. You're going to have to wait for a first-year head coach, now second-year head coach heading into his you know second season at Seton Hall. And it takes a while for these guys to make the NCAA tournament. The expectations are, were very high when Coach Shaheen Holloway was coming in. Now they're going to kind of taper down a little bit, and Coach Holloway's got his chance to really build his team and get things going here for the Hall. But now moving on to the women's basketball side of things, they've got a lot to work on as well, and they've continued to work on it. But we're going to start, we're going to start with the departure, a big one here. So a transfer from Auburn last year, Jayla Jordan, will now be transferring to Pitt. 
this season. So they lose Jalen Jordan, these Seton Hall Pirates. Tough loss, always a great player for the Hall last year. You know, what does that loss mean for Seton Hall? Well, first of all, one of the things is that whenever when you were interacting with the women's team, Jalen Jordan was definitely one of the key members of that locker room. A great chemistry player. Whenever you just saw the team overall, she was always someone that was always just smiling, positive, and and while that might not be a very a big thing when you look at her stats, she was at times a very volatile player when it came to her minutes. That's something that's very key for a locker room that's going through a very long season from November to March. I mean, it was a very long season, and to have players that keep the locker room happy, keep everybody, you know, just good morale. Uh, Jayla Jordan was that player, also a very good shooter. So Pitt's, Pitt's getting a really good player here, you know, if you're a Pitt fan out there. Um, you're getting a really solid player, a solid shooter, can really stretch the floor and get a good amount of rebounds. So, you know, Pitt... They got a good basketball program and they're really doing it well. But we're going to move on to the players that Seton Hall got. Okay, you got Iana Lofts transferring to Seton Hall in about five minutes before the show started. Um, you had McKenna White also transferred to Seton Hall. We're going to kind of focus on Iana Lofts here as well, um, averaging 11.2 points a game and just under six rebounds for St. Bonaventure last year. And, you know, what does that bring to the table for Seton Hall? Because we kind of knew that this roster was going to have a lot of turnover heading into this season, you know, with a lot of departures, especially Lauren Park Lane, City Cooks. And now you kind of bring in two players here, especially Iana Lops. You know, what does that bring to the table? Well, I think for Iana, when it comes to her skill level, she was a player that played in a very good conference. The A-10 is nothing to sneeze at. This is a team that had a conference overall that has had very good programs, Rhode Island, UMass, which we'll get into later. But overall in her career, she was definitely a consistent double-digit scorer, constantly was getting near 20-20, even double-doubles. And while she did shoot poorly, I would be interested in seeing if she can now improve that. I think it's almost a challenge to her game where when you head into a conference where, I'll just be frank, I think the Big East is definitely a tier above when it comes to A-10. When you sort of have that challenge, I think Coach Bazell is going get, to definitely get the best out of her, and she's going to become a much improved basketball player. I mean, it just comes to making that adjustment, and these players are definitely going to have to go out and make that adjustment and get into it. Obviously, you know, we talk about the Big East. UConn is UConn. I mean, DePaul's losing Anissa Morrow. So it's going to be a lot of shakeups in this Big East Conference. And if Seton Hall's able to make really the right moves in the transfer portal, that, as they currently are doing now, as these two players have really come in just the past couple of days, now Coach Tony Bazella, he's, he's made work in the transfer portal in his past many times. And he could be doing it right again. Yes, you have that adjustment from mid-major conferences, but Coach Bazella has done this before. He's been around. He knows what he's doing when it comes to these players, Chris. I mean, and when it comes to this Big East Conference, I'm going to ask the same question about the men's basketball team that I asked you. You know, how are they going to really stack up heading into next season? Well, I think for women's team, they've always shown something of their ability to over exceed expectations, even in times where they're seen as maybe a six, seven, even like 10 in the conference. Coach Rosella showed that throughout his past two years. Maybe not so this past season, where they might have not really exceeded their goals in making the NCAA tournament. But as always, he's a coach that is maximizing the team's talent, and they're definitely going to be reaching that 15 to 21, uh, 21 season every year. And to bring in players that can score, I mean, Seed Hall lost a lot of scoring heading into this year, and now they get two players who can really put the ball in the basket. So that's going to be huge for Seed Hall as they move into next season. But now we're going to move on to stick and ball here with softball here for Seed Hall, as they have been absolutely on fire for Seton Hall University. I mean, it's been really great to watch this softball team as we've talked about time and time again here on Hall Talk, as you know. Um, but now, kind of looking back at this Villanova series, they're able to take one game. They won that Sunday game after Friday was a doubleheader instead of playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They fought through the weather. They weathered the storm. And when it rains, it pours. And Seton Hall poured it on for Villanova. They were able to mercy rule Villanova even after a rain delay. Yes, they lost the series, but that Sunday win was huge for Seton Hall. I mean, now, Let's just look back at that Villanova series and your overall thoughts on how Seton Hall performed given every situation that they went through. I mean, there's a lot of shakeups, a lot of differences, a lot of things you don't want to go through as a softball team, and Seton Hall fought as best they could. Definitely. When you actually look at their series overall, Friday and Friday's doubleheader, the really struggle was the fact that they got behind too early and too often, and that's something that's really going to cripple you as a team. And when you only allow or score two runs a game, in both of those games, you're not going to be able to win many games. But on Sunday, they were able to really flip the uh, flip the script. Sydney Babbitt had an incredible game, throwing five innings, only allowing three hits and one earned run. 
you will take that any day of the week as a starting pitcher. Now they head into Butler. I definitely think they have the momentum. And you're hearing about them. They are very confident that they can sweep the Bulldogs. They, they've got all the confidence in the world that they can go out and do that. And now kind of moving over to that. First off, Cindy Babbick, especially on Sunday, stepping into what, what could be the biggest game of her Seton Hall career, you know, avoiding the sweep for, against Villanova. They went out and did that. You know, big credit to Cindy Babbick for being able to step in and get into that role and get it done. But kind of now that you mentioned Butler, how can Seton Hall go out and sweep Butler? Because that's the goal. If they do that, they're co-champions of the Big East. That's the storyline. That's what's going on heading into this weekend here at Seton Hall. So make sure to go out and watch that softball team and give them your support, of course. But how can they go out and do that? Because the bats have been pretty great. The pitching has been solid. Yes, Villanova was a bit shaky, but again, that's Villanova, the reigning Big East champion. Now you go against Butler, who's kind of fighting for their Big East standing. How can Seton Hall go out and get that sweep against the Butler Bulldogs? Well, yeah, Butler is actually a very formidable team this season. They've been 4-2 and two in Big East series this year. It's not going to be just some easy opponent where you're going to be able to sweep with ease. But when you really look at Butler overall this season, they definitely have a struggle in terms of batting average, 260 to their opponents batting a whopping 3.23. At the same time, when it comes to runs, their team ERA is up to 5.39, where the opponents are just pitching a stellar 3.66. And lastly, this is a team that is not that great in the field. They've given up 61 errors compared to their opponents, 33. I think for Seton Hall to really get a win and a win a series and potentially a sweep for them to get the big uh, share of the Big East Conference uh, regular season it definitely comes of get, getting a lead early. They definitely have to do that. Villanova did that a lot against them in that series. And now Seton Hall was able to do that against Villanova, get that lead early, really pour it on you know, in the first couple of innings. And that's what it takes for these teams. That's what it really takes. You have to get the scoring on early because you let these Big East teams hang around. It doesn't matter the sport. Everybody's got a chance. Everybody's got a chance to win. And Butler is a very, very good softball team. So it's going to be a tough challenge, but we'll see if Seton Hall can get through. I mean, we all think they can here at Pirate Land, of course. But now moving on to the baseball diamond. They've got a lot going on there. You know, their spot isn't as locked in, but they've still been playing very well. We're going to talk about the Xavier series for sure. They just picked up a big win against Manhattan um, in a big non-conference win. They won that, I believe, by double digits. So, you know, how have the Seton Hall baseball team been playing as of late? I mean, they've had a great stretch against Xavier winning two out of three. <coughs> and now they've got a big series coming up. But how has this, how has this baseball team really been this year so far and in these last couple of games of the series? Well, I mean, they have been struggling when you just look at the records in general. But when you look at particularly that last game against Manhattan, they were really able to show you that you know, without, what, for me, with how I always judge baseball, when it comes to the amount of free bases you get, Seton Hall was able to get 12 to the Jasper 7 constantly taking advantage of walks, stolen bases, hit by pitch, errors, all those things mounted up. And it's the reason Seton Hall was able to win comfortably 14 to three. And at the same time, that heart of the order, f uh, three through six combined win, 11 hits, three extra base hits, and 11 RBIs. You'll take that any time, your coach Shepard. I mean, you know, you look at the Xavier series now, and obviously they've got the UConn series coming up. But against Xavier, I mean, this team hits so well. The bats were absolutely on fire. The home runs were going. There's just maybe something in the air in Cincinnati. I don't know. But they really absolutely got those bats going against the Xavier uh, Musketeers over there. And it just really shows that this Seton Hall team, if they want to get hot, they can get hot. And they have been doing it so mm -hmm. far. They did it against Xavier. And now they've got an opportunity to do it against UConn. And a big player that's been behind that is Devin Hack, batting 310 on the year. What a great series as well. I mean, he's been phenomenal so far. So let's take a look at Devin Hack also and this UConn series as a whole and how that's going to be a factor. Yeah, when you look at Devin Hack, these past four games, the series against Xavier and then the game most recently against the Jaspers, combined 8 of 18, 6 runs so far this entire season, batting well above 300, many extra base hits, is able to score at will when it comes to runs, at the same time can have that presence by punching in RBIs. And the last thing that makes him so deadly as a hitter, it's his ability to steal extra base bags, a perfect 23 of 23. When it comes to Coach Shepard, he always makes an emphasis that stealing bags, trying to get that extra base is critical for this team to win. He has done that very extremely well this season and a good reason why he might be first team all Big East. And now let's take a look at the series against UConn as well as they got to travel out to stores to get that done. Um, I mean, UConn is always one of the premier programs in baseball when it comes to the Big East Conference. When it comes to just the Northeast, it's UConn and everybody else. So for Seton Hall, I mean, you know, UConn has kind of had a bit of a down year and they've still had a really good year. But in terms of the Big East, they haven't been as dominant as maybe they were last year. So how does Seton Hall kind of go out, go on the road, and maybe at least steal a game, potentially win a series against these UConn Huskies? Because Seton Hall is a team that's fighting for their Big East spot. They want to get to that top four, softball's top six, baseball's top four. So you want to get to that spot, and you've got to at least steal a game from UConn here, no? 
Yeah, you certainly need to, but it's going to be tough. UConn this season is 4-0 in Big East series. Um, this year, when it comes to their style of play, they average well over eight runs. Their ERA is impeccable. It's very impressive compared to their opponents. Their batting average, the team overall is batting well above 300 as a team. That is incredible for college baseball in a conference like the Big East. And we talk about Seton Hall and their strength in stealing bases. I mean, UConn makes that look like preschool. I mean, they have had 86 stolen bases this year. An impressive rate of around 85% successful rate. It's just a very tough team. If Seton Hall can find a way to win one or even win the series, it is a definite good thing to go into Big East, Conf uh, Big East tournament play. And they've still got a couple of series after that, but, I mean, it really all starts here against UConn. This is where it really happens for this Seton Hall baseball team. They've got to find a way to get it done. They've got to find a way to get a couple of wins, at least get one here, so they can stay in that four spot and hang around at the Big East Conference. But that'll do it for Hall Talk here on Pirate Television. Thank you so much for watching. Chris, your final Hall Talk. How are you feeling? It's, uh, it's sentimental. Uh, may the fourth be with you, by the way, today. Of course, yes. Um, may the fourth but be with uh, you yeah, it's, uh, I've always enjoyed working with PTV, Hall Talk, or um, just news in general at Pirate TV. And it's something that I've always had a pleasure of being a part of, and I'm never going to forget it. One of the best experiences I've had at Seton Hall. Couldn't agree more. I mean, again, thank you to Pirate Television. If, if you're interested in Seton Hall or anything, Pirate Television, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, endorse. You know, exactly. I, I will absolutely, I will endorse Pirate Television forever. Um, it's been great. It's been fun. You know, we don't have enough time to talk about how great it's been, how much of a pleasure it's been to be a part of this. But that will do it for Hall Talk. We're done blabbering, okay? That will do it for Hall Talk here on Pirate Television. Thank you so much for watching. Been a pleasure. Have a good one.